So when you look at something like an Operon, the LAC Operon or the TRIP Operon, it's a pretty simple system. Eukaryotic gene expression is, is much more complex than that. Okay? Certainly the gene expression is still controlled along the lines of the central dogma, but genes can be turned on and off in a variety of different ways. Uh, and so we're going to take a look at uh, controlling the central dogma from the very start, the genome itself. This is, this is part of the, the gene expression and control that just fascinates me. So here we have the human genome. Okay? So you've got your 23 pairs of chromosomes, and every cell in your body has all of these. So if the gene for taking care of business in a skin cell is on chromosome pair number eight, but the gene for being an effective brain cell is on chromosome number five, chromosome number five doesn't need to be active when it's not needed. So if you have a brain cell, the chromosome number five needs to be active, but chromosome number eight needs to be shut off. How do you do that? Well, one of the ways that that is controlled is through a process referred to as methylation and acetylation. Okay? Controlling which parts of the DNA molecule are accessible when the DNA is in the form of chromatin, that unwound material in the cell. So, Brief review, here's our chromosome. The chromosome is supercoiled. Supercoiled as individual helices of DNA wrapped around histone protein octets. Okay, so here's our, take a look, close look here. Okay, here's our octet or eight histone proteins and the strand of DNA here wrapped around them. It allows for a supercoiling of the DNA molecule without damaging the DNA molecule. So we can use that storage system as a means of control of what's accessible. Okay? So if I need access to it, it needs to be relaxed and open. If I don't want access to it, it needs to be compacted and therefore inaccessible. So here's a diagram of that nucleosome, okay, our octet or octamer of eight histone proteins. Okay, the DNA here is red. Here is a model of that same concept. Here is your, the blue, what looks like blue ribbon here is the histone proteins. And you can see the double helix of the DNA wrapped around it. So what we are going to do then is access this based on, oh, if you will, small additions to those histone proteins. So here we have the histone proteins that have a chemical connection to them that is referred to as a histone tail. And the nature of that tail is going to control whether that piece of DNA is accessible or not. If it is active, it is unwound, unrolled, and accessible. If it is inactive, <coughs> excuse me, if it is inactive, it is compressed and therefore can't be transcribed. What does this? Methylation and acetylation. So here we have, oh, let's take a look at a better picture. Here we go. So the top is methylated DNA. So what you're seeing is that methylation squishes that those histones together and therefore makes the DNA inaccessible to any sort of ability to be transcribed. Unmethylated, on the other hand, on the bottom here, opens that up, relaxes those histone proteins, and allows for the DNA to be transcribed, thereby completely controlling what's accessible and what's inaccessible. 